The latest study hack in town is to convert any boring textbooks into an AI generated podcast with Google's latest service called Notebook LM. And I gotta say, the podcast it generates is so realistic that most of my non AI friends who I've shown this to are completely mind blown at how real it sounds and how easy it was made. Like, just listen to this. What we're diving into today, well, it isn't about playing Dune in some crazy way. It's about a whole new way of actually creating the game. Yeah, using AI, it really makes you rethink what game development could look like. Seriously. All I really did was throw in the PDF of a research paper and wait for about 10 minutes. How crazy is that? On top of all these, Notebook LM is completely free too. So this is definitely a game changer for studying. Or is it? Other than its uncanny similarity to an actual podcast, along with people claiming that learning will be revolutionized forever, how does it actually perform as a tool for studying? So to find out about that, I used it for the past 10 days and compare it to reading the corresponding papers to understand how well it truly helps you learn. And before I share with you my experiences so far, let me just tell you that this doesn't replace any learning materials that you have to learn visually. It wouldn't be a viable substitute for studying math or watching a great video. You have to expect it like an audiobook and whatever an audiobook can do to help you is what this AI generated podcast can help while being presented in a more entertaining way. So if you want to learn coding, math, or even creatives or crafts, this notebook LM ain't the right thing for you. So if you're looking for another way to learn, then you should check out today's sponsor Skillshare. Skillshare is an incredible platform for you to start learning in a huge range of different creative fields, whether it's drawing, photography, or even picking up Photoshop that you have always wanted to get good at. It offers all kinds of amazing classes to help you develop those skills and find your creative outlet, like this one from Yeti Learn, where he teaches you how to utilize the latest AI technology in Photoshop like the generative AI fill. This AI function is now powered by Adobe Firefly, which is completely trained on licensed data and safe for commercial use, so you can learn how to utilize it to assist your creativity and ease up your workload. The lessons aren't that alone either, so it wouldn't be a huge burden trying to finish up the classes. You can easily plan your weekends to learn about these new techniques without being completely overwhelmed. And if Photoshop or other creatives are not for you, there are also computer science classes like Deep Learning and Neural Networks with Python by Frank Keen, which provides you with a great foundation if you want to get into the field of artificial intelligence or even machine learning. It dives in both the theory and the practicals, which is perfect for any beginner. So whether you want to explore a new hobby, level up in your career, or even start your own creative business, Skillshare has classes to help you achieve your goals. What's even better is that the first 500 people to click the link down in my description can get one month free to try out their ad free and high quality classes. So start learning now before you forget. And thank you Skillshare for sponsoring this video. So onto my first impressions, I believe it's fair to say that anyone hearing this for the first time would be very impressed by its conversational capabilities. Okay, even with myself knowing how good AI generated speech currently is, this fully generated conversation still caught me by surprise. It completely mimics all the elements of a stereotypical podcast with intros, fake laughs, mm-hmmms, terrible boomer jokes, and outros with call to actions. Honestly though, it is kind of cringe, the kind of cringe you would feel when watching the Saturday night shows. But if you can look past that, here is my in-depth review about it. If you're new to my channel, well hey what's up? Most of the time, I read the AI research papers manually and then write down my thoughts on them to make a video about it. The process of reading takes a decent amount of time and now with the option of Notebook LM's AI podcast, it does shrink down the time from maybe a 3 or 4 hours reading down to a 12 minutes AI podcast. So to test the effectiveness of how well it'll perform and really help me learn, I used it to generate 12 podcasts on research papers I have and have not read before. With the ones I haven't read, I'll read it fully afterwards. While the content I test may differ from your specific use case, I still think that some of my experiences may be helpful for you. So after going through everything, here are my thoughts. Generally, I find myself going back to the paper and dive deeper to properly understand the basic concepts. I guess it covers the gist, the main takeaways and the conclusions, but it doesn't cover the key metrics and the technical details like how some key techniques are exactly done or elaborate on how they work. For example, in the test time compute paper that I covered in a previous video, the only technical part it mentioned was that test time compute has two types of methods, reinforcement learning, verify, or self-verify. Other than that, it was mostly talking about the takeaways like test time compute exploring the possibilities at generation while needing to strike a balance, discuss the fact that these two methods 
would improve the performance of the LLMs and the idea of how a smaller model with more thinking time outperforms a larger model with limited thinking time. For providing you a general understanding of the paper, I do agree that this is pretty decent already, but I would definitely appreciate more mentions of the key details, like how the smaller model outperforms the larger model that is 14 times its size, or how exactly the test time compute methods work. I even think it explicitly avoids using complex terminologies and verbally saying statistics or results because the language models now are not that bad at summarization. And after all the podcasts I've listened to, it still consistently skips those details. But maybe that's a good thing. The AI definitely has made reading these papers much less daunting, which is perfect if you're new to reading research papers or want to have a quick brief about the paper before diving into it in depth. On top of that, I think Notebook LM also loves to create analogies to help you understand things, but it often is a hit or miss. Well, it misses more than it hits, to be honest. In the game engine paper about AI-based game engines, it made around three analogies, and two of them were kind of mid. Here's one of them. How does it actually use all that to create the game world as you're playing? That's where the diffusion model comes in. Imagine you're trying to restore like a really faded old photograph. Okay, got it. A diffusion model works by kind of learning how to reverse that damage pixel by pixel until boom, you've got the original image. So it's like the AI is a digital art restorer. And here's a slightly better one. During training, they actually added controlled amounts of noise into the Doom footage the AI was learning from. So like they're training a musician to play perfectly but they're doing it in a noisy subway. Mm -hmm. The musician has to learn to filter out the distractions. Perfect analogy. And to get it to create a lot of analogies on the technical stuff, or even just have it to touch on it in general, I realized that you cannot input content that is too long. Even though the input limit is around 500k words, it still doesn't really work well with long inputs. Likely because there is a soft cap on how long the AI podcast can be generated. So basically, when you provide something too lengthy, you most likely will have to say goodbye to any well-rounded insights since the summary would need to gloss over many details to not to exceed the soft limit Google have potentially set. Here, I compiled this graph which is sorted by the total informative pages of a paper compared to the audio length the AI podcast generated. So for the movie Gen paper, which is around 68 pages long, it only generated a 15 minutes podcast that only covers the paper partially. And excluding the super long papers, you can see that most AI podcasts have around the same length with them only differing in one to three pages of content. Content. What's interesting though is that when I specifically set the total informative pages, it is not representative of what I threw into Notebook LM. I did not trim any pages when throwing in the PDFs of the research paper, so there are papers with an extra 20 pages of reference and appendix, while some only have one or two extra pages. I don't actually know how they parse the PDFs, but I believe that what they display at the side is what their AI processes. And if that's so, Notebook LM's capabilities at sift through the useless and messy information is indeed really effective. With that being said, its ability to perform these tasks doesn't accurately reflect the quality of the content being generated. I would say that roughly 30% of the time is being spent on bantering or segueing. Another 30% are about the actual content, explanations, or analogies. Around 10% are spent on the intro and the outro. And the last 30% are used for filler that sounds like what AI bros would say. What I mean by that is the AI generated podcast loves to make buzz, and it will say the most stereotypical AI bros things like overusing words such as huge and imagine, which triggers my cringe reflex every time. Transparency is going to be huge. Well, imagine a world where, imagine if your phone, imagine a future, imagine, that would be huge. I mean, listening to this the first few times is fine, but when you're on the fourth or fifth time, it starts to get a bit obnoxious. It'll generate some conversational slop like, Ever get the feeling like, you know, there's some kind of hidden code to the universe, like something deeper beneath the surface of everything we see. The AI hosts will get impressed by literally anything. On a slightly unrelated note, here's a quick tip to detect AI bro talk or AI slop. If whatever they say can be applied to more than a handful of research, then that is slop. And let me tell you, it's a wild ride. It really makes you think differently about AI and how it learns. Right. That's slop. It could make the AI landscape much more diverse, more robust, with innovation coming from all over the place. That's also slop. And just like those legendary bands, these merged AI models, 
They've got the potential to create something truly special. That's a lot of slop. But I think this Notebook LM doesn't generate these slops by chance. It likely amplifies the conclusions or ideas presented in the research paper, making them appear more significant or exaggerated. And combined with the AI podcaster personality, it has the problem of making anything exciting, which will lead to overhyping literally any details, and especially worse if the content provided is already biased. So Notebook LM doesn't provide any use useful or meaningful information, it lacks substance, making it hard to get valuable insights, hence kinda noisy. I wouldn't be as harsh to call it soulless, but if people use this to mass produce content, it would probably be some very noisy content that you cannot make out what is good or bad. But I still gotta say, the AI generated podcast is still very natural, sometimes I will even forget it is an AI generated conversation when I am too focused on listening to the content. And that is definitely a huge achievement. There are some good jokes deliveries too, and I was pretty impressed. But how does an AI even begin to self-edit? Does it have a little Grammarly program running in the background? And I think it's pretty funny when they claim how they are like humans, and the AI hosts would even have some fake opinions, which is just imitating the training data of the AI podcast. Reason, strategize, even learn from their mistakes just like we do. It's like we're finally teaching AI to think more like us, and if AI- There are still some bugs or artifacts from time to time though. I would say around one to two per generation. Some are pretty small. These are the kind of questions philosophers and ethicists are debating right now. Yeah. But some artifacts are like jump scares. Write a poem, compose some music, design a building. Maybe someday. That's an exciting thought. That's wild. I also tested it on some other type of content. For the weekly top research papers, which I compile every week and post on my newsletter or Twitter, I figured it would be cool to have a podcast to chat about them. Well, it turns out it kind of works, but not really. So there are two problems. First is that it'll miss out the key details about the research paper, which is for me the most important and interesting part. Instead, it'll just blab about how good it is and what's changed. And second, it doesn't cover all the papers. Well, I could separate what I wrote wrote into two Google Docs, but that defeats the purpose as it'll become two podcasts instead of one. Oh yeah, Notebook LM can link to Google Docs by the way, so I share with it the entire thread that has like 23 papers, and it completely forgot to talk about five of the papers. What's even more interesting is that the podcast did not go in the order of the papers from start to finish. Instead, it goes back and forth in mentioning them in a completely random order. So yeah, it doesn't work for summarizing summaries, which I think is a bad thing because that means it's only good for summarizing content and not that good for transforming your study notes into something nice to listen to, since it'll probably miss a handful of concepts you have noted down. It does also work for websites though. I had it to summarize Anthropic's blog called Scaling Mono Semanticity, which I also cover in an older video. With that being said, since the blog is like 20k words, the quality of the AI podcast was a bit superficial. While it did a good job explaining the main point which is dictionary learning, other than that, it's really like Luster. It also started the hyping slop like an AI bro again after the 10 minutes mark. And not gonna lie, this was probably one of the worst results I got. The same goes for the movie gem paper, which is 69 pages long. So I think you definitely gotta make sure you don't include too much stuff so the AI doesn't overload with too much information, which will interfere with the generation. For another paper I gave called Automated Design of Agentic Systems, it started talking about AI takes over and how we need to be in the driver's seat. Kind of funny coming from an AI generated podcast. Podcast. But it makes me think of those sci-fi movies where the AI goes all self-aware and decides humans are the problem. Should we be worried about giving AI this much control? Definitely a valid concern and researchers are thinking about that a lot. Absolutely. We need to make sure we're in the driver's seat here. Yeah. I do think that some content should be trimmed before you pass it to Notebook LM, or else it'll include a lot of unproductive conversations that will make the AI go off a tangent, which will not help you study. Oh my god, is this what you called AI podcast engineering? But anyways, I think overall, the quality in the pipeline of the AI podcast is amazing. But it's only truly good and productive for you, or for me at least, if it's helping me to give a first impression for a paper, since the details are too dumped down in a way that it did not help me understand anything specific. So that 12 minutes of an AI podcast doesn't really save me 3 or 4 hours of reading time. Well maybe because I do need that 3 or 4 hours to ponder and grok about the paper too. What do you think? Let me know down in the comments. And that's it for this video. If you'd like to keep up with the latest research paper, definitely check out my newsletter. It is a weekly issue that provides you both insights on the latest and the hottest research papers and the most important AI news in the previous week. So you won't miss out. Thank you for watching. A big shout out to Andrew Luschelias. 
Chris Ledoux, D. Gan, Miglim, Robert Zaviasa, Louis Muck, Ben Shainer, Marcelo Ferreira, and many others that support me through Patreon or YouTube. Follow me on Twitter if you haven't, and I'll see y'all in the next one.